in the build up to Zambia's independence, there is a story that remains untold. The story of a woman, loved by her people, hated by the church and the local authorities. The woman, Alice Malenga Lenshina. This is her story. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Wicked Wednesday episode 7. So today I have another interesting story for you as you've already heard from the intro. Unfortunately today I'm not going to be doing my makeup because I do not have my makeup with me. So today's story is very interesting. Today's story is something because it's like Zambia's buried slash forgotten history this is something you don't learn when you're learning about like independence and colonial and everything so i'm bringing a story for you so let's get into it alice mulenga leshina was born alice mulenga lubusha of the bemba people crocodile clan to be particular in chinsali then northern rhodesia present day zambia Muchinga province so alice grew up around of course at the time it was a heavily traditional society. Bembas are matrilineal and matrilocal. So she grew up, which basically means that succession is on the line of the woman. So you basically follow the women, follow the woman's line. So that's what she was brought up around. There's not much honesty about her childhood and everything. But her story, this story starts, um, the interesting part of the story starts when she gets married. So she gets married, she gets married the first time. He died a little after they were married. So according to Bemba tradition, you're supposed to marry the brother of your husband. So the brother or the cousin. So in this case, then she now was made to marry her late husband's cousin, Petros Chitankwa. Petros and Lenshina had five children together. So at some point in her life, Lenshina gets malaria, cerebral malaria. It's a very severe case. At that time, it's really the olden days and then it's also africa so it's mismanaged as well as like on medication so she really she gets really really sick so then she now has multiple seizures in her period the period in which she has that malaria she has multiple 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 seizures on october 24 1953 alice goes into a coma after three days she's pronounced dead now she's pronounced dead now funeral funerals funeral procession start a couple of days later, then she now wakes up. And when she wakes up, that's why the story gets juicy. Hey, <laughs> when she wakes up, she said she woke up like a mo like a minimum of four times. Like she she died, woke up, died, woke up like a minimum of four times. So now, in that departure, she said she made Jesus. She made God. Basically, the vision is that she needs to save the people. Not through the white man's religion, but through tradition itself. So mixing the white man's religion and tradition. So basically, she's God's messenger to the people. That's what Mishnah comes back with. Now, when she comes back, she goes to her church. Now, at this time, it's a, it's a, it's a colonial period. Now, how are they colonizing Africans? Religion. So now, at this time, there's an influx of missionaries in the southern region of Africa. But in Zambia, to, in Zambia to be precise, the, mis the missionaries are at Lubwa, Lubwa Mission, and there are two, com two main mi um, missions, and there are two competing missions. There's the White Fathers, the Catholics, and the, the United Free Church of Scotland. So these two, there's the Catholics and the Protestants. So they're here. And they settled in Chinsali, uh, actually. So they were at the same. So like Chinsali at that time was like the center of religion and everything. So these two missions are set up there, and those are the the churches the people are going to. So when Nishina comes back, Nishina was going to the Free Church of Scotland. When she comes back, she goes to the pastor and tells him about the visions and everything. Now, um. Not really sure if Lenshina was baptized before or after she had the visions. However, after baptism, her name changed. That's when her name changed to Alice Mulenga Lenshina. Her actual name was Alice Mulenga Lubusha. But then it changes to her baptismal name is Alice Mulenga Lenshina. The priests gave her this name. Now, the name is not Lenshina. 
the name is Regina. Now, you know, my baby people, <laughs> we do these things, we can't speak. Not me, though. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so um, her name is Regina, which means queen. But because members can't speak, it's transformed into Lenshina. Half of Bemba names are just mispronunciations, honestly, but that's not what we're talking about right now. Anyway, so Alice Mulenga Lenshina. So now, because after she's baptized, she has this vision to go to the pastors. Now, the, the, the church will come it for a while, like, okay, cool. God spoke to you, Shani, Shani. Okay, cool. Great. Mulenga, um, Lenshina starts preaching this 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 message that she had now she's a very charismatic woman very energetic woman she preaches to the masses she preaches to the the people of low rank the basic people she preaches to them and in bimba of course they can understand bimba they can understand bimba so she preaches to them leshina gets becomes popular with them because she is doing what the church does not do preaching to the basic folk preaching to the local folk that's what the church don't do the church is hierarchical and she doesn't notice hierarchy she doesn't notice social rank so people are drawn to her at this point popularity starts growing and growing and growing in 1954 Lenshina is thrown out of the church because she lacked training but it was just called for um you're gain, gaining more popularity than us and you're gaining more power they did not like the fact that it was a woman gaining such popularity and, and people being drawn to her as well as the fact that she was black let's not forget that we were colonized, we were colonized here she was black what is a woman doing what is a black woman doing having so much power so yeah she was thrown out of the church however at the time she was thrown out of the church she went with followers because as i said she was what she was doing what the church was not doing not upholding social hierarchy not discriminating against educated and uneducated that kind of situation so people went with her so she continued preaching and she noticed that oh okay so people are following me so what did she do next then she decided to make her own like church admission based on what she, based on her vision like meshing tradition bimba tradition with christianity as some of the pillars of her some of the beliefs of a church were um, abolishing polygamy, um, no heavy drinking, no use of bad words like profanity, you know, cursing like insults, um, sexual relations outside of marriage, and most importantly, abolishing that inheritance thing, that Bemba tradition where you, your, your brother inherits your wife after you die, that one. Let's not forget what she grew up on. This this in my research this this came up because that's what happened to her she was inherited so in her religion she didn't want that to happen so i guess like she wanted to help the girl the girlies out you know another thing that was also rejected in her church was like politics involvement in politics she did not want that at all her main thing was just helping out women and returning bemba tradition to being matrilineal because even if yes it was matrilineal matrilineal things were not upholded they were forgotten because the patriarchy had taken over so she wanted to bring back members to that way of life where you follow the woman follow the mother follow like not necessarily that rules are made by the women but the women are the most important part of the society so yes that was what she was anchored on what made her religion even more impressionable to the local people was the music so leshina made sure that the music was bemba she composed bemba religious songs if that makes sense so the people the people could sing and understand what they were singing she also made like in addition to it being bemba mean the language of this of the music being bemba she also composed it in a traditional way so it was like i don't know if kalundo kalindola was there at that time but like let's just say let's just imagine that the gospel songs or the religious songs were like kalindola and in bemba and the people could understand what they were singing and comprehend it so people are drawn to that because they do not want to have a faith they don't want to have a faith where 
they are worshiping and they do not know what they are saying because as i said the the church or the churches at luba mission were very much um hierarchical they loved the more educated people so those people that could understand english it was a problem for them to worship so people were drawn to this side because they were paid attention to they were treated the same they could understand what they were singing in 1957 it was believed that she had from 50 to 150 thousand followers that was the fastest growing religion and it was more than the white fathers and the the mission of scotland had combined that's how much power and influence she had she had that many followers in 1958 because she had so many followers a large cathedral was set up in her hometown of chinzali and this cathedral would be called Sione, or in english zion Sione is member in english it's zion oh so, yeah it was called zion in hometown of chinzali fun fact that's my village <laughs> that's my village these are my people okay so be kind in the comments at the end of this video it was believed according to lenshina and her vision sione i'm going to be saying sione because this is been by my friends this is zambian history so i'm not going to say Zione, i'm going to say sione so according to lenshina sione was where jesus would come back this is well, that's where he would land the day he would come back to save humanity so the temple was grand okay going to insert a picture i'm sure i've already put up a picture somewhere the temple was grand for its time it was the largest one in this in the region at that time it was bigger than the one the fathers had it was bigger than the one the scottish had it was big at the time the church was being built I've already mentioned how it was so popular. It was not just popular in Chinsali alone. It was also popular in different parts of the country. This church spread to Kasama. It spread some regions in the Copper Belt, some regions in Wapula. Popularity just grew around the Lumpa Church, even just in Africa as a whole. Is nearby, nearby countries like Tanzania and Congo would hear about Lenshina and the Lumpa, Lumpa Church. So, um, when the church was set up, the chiefs were happy. Other clans were happy. Now, remember, members are uh, in clans, like Abena Ngandu, Abena this, Abena that. So the clans are happy because, first of all, that was the colonial period. People were going to the white man for saving. Now there was this woman, local woman, member woman of the Kokodao clan that was there and the people were following her. So the Chitimukuru was very happy that this was happening because people were withdrawing from the white man. It's 1957. Independence happened in 1964. So the air is changing. Keep that in mind. The air is changing. People are tired. The chiefs are tired. Clan leaders are tired. People are tired. At this time, everyone was happy that nation I was there because it was just like now we're self-reliant now we have our own faith now we can believe it. like that kind of situation so all things are good until 1960 what was happening in 1960 on the other side of the world the world being Zambia Junip is being born Junip headed by the legendary Kenneth Kaunda founding father press president the good stuff unip is being born now unip was very unip broke off from anc because anc was like anc was the grandfather unip was the son like um yeah i'm not going to go very much into the politics of all this or the history of all this because guys um yeah no this is about nation yeah yeah unip anc was the father unip was the son anc was calm logic thinking unip was unip was very radical unip was very radical because it had young men so now unip was headed by kenneth kaunda a young man he wanted things fast fast freedom quick 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 so kenneth kaunda much like nationa is a very charismatic person you have to be charismatic to be a leader very charismatic person very much hands-on very much in charge 
so he broke off from the nc slowly but surely people started joining you need breaking out from the nc or just people who are not even into politics so people started joining you need now what i'm going to say is going to sound problematic but you have to remember that zambia was a one-party state until 1991 so now the popularity of leishina stood in the way of unip because zambia was a one party state until 1991 so you understand what i'm trying to put across can't have two charismatic leaders the 1960s pre-independence kaunda put up a smear campaign against the lumpa church and nation kind of like the same way the churches those two opposing churches um the white fathers and the scotland mission Scot scotland yeah scotland mission tried to put a smear campaign against nation at the time they said the nation was not christian she probably had demons and other stuff same strategy with kawanda the difference is those were white and anyone that believed in nation at that time was not going to listen to a white man about their own so now the difference is this smear campaign is coming from a zambian another bimba another one of their own so the the effects are different so now it's two people zambians fighting against each other two people bimbas zambians fighting against each other to be honest according to my research Lenshina wasn't actively involved in the politics of anything she was most of the time she was secluded only came out for social social interaction when she had to preach or baptize people because she was the only one that was baptizing people any people that came any people that needed a baptism she was the only one that baptized so she wasn't really into the politics of anything her leaders people at the top were one of the leaders was her husband and then other bemba people most of them from the crocodile clan men and women alike so yeah Lenshina did not invo actively involve herself in the politics of everything. Her members though did. Her new young members though did. Now, Kauna started a smear campaign against the Numba mission. At this point he had won some he had won several seats and then um, he was prime minister. He was prime minister. At that time um the British were slowly um relinquishing power. Yes. So now at that time he started the smear campaign the campaign would see other young unip members attacking lumpa church members after this attack started leshna as i said she didn't she wanted no part of the politics but so she got her people where she was and moved further into chinsali and they made their own settlement so their own secluded area where they were the problem with this was nation did not consult with the chiefs the clan the clan leaders nobody she just took her people and went now the thing with this is um when you google this when you research this it will come up as a quote which is um yeah it's not far from it because at this point if you watch a lot of crime stuff seclusion and like secluding and moving away from the rest of the civilization is just another trait of a court so that's what Nishina did i want you guys to judge for yourselves who was wrong um i know that's at the end of this video so you guys will tell me in the comments so yeah she went they put up store kids like barricades to enclose themselves in, in their settlements all of them so that entire situation was headed by Lenshina and her leaders at the top. Now, when Kaunda learned about this, when Kaunda and the British learned about this, they were mad. They were not happy. They were not happy. Now, this is 1964, early, mid-1964. The British had not left Zambia entirely at that time. Kenneth Kaunda was the prime minister, but there was still British control at the time. I read this... Um, I want to say biography, but I don't know what it's called. It's an article by 
the man who was in charge of Chinsali at that time because the t- at the time the lumpa thing was happening i did speak white people didn't want to be in Chinsali they did not want to be in Chinsali at all Chinsali maybe Kans- maybe Kasama but Chinsali Chinsali was a no-go area so they called the, this white man and he was like the rest of the people are refusing do you want to go and he said yeah sure and then he did not know what was right what was happening there because they had just come back and then he found what was going on it's like oh so this is why everybody is saying no so now it's mid 1964 um the colonel wants to know what's going on. Who's this rebellious leader that's breaking havoc here? Like, why aren't they subjecting? You know. So he realizes that oh, this is this is a, this is a war. This is this is a, this is an act of terror to the British. That's what the British are looking at, are looking at it. That's how they see it. It's an act of um, what's the word? Treason. It's an act of treason. So they're like, we need to get rid of this woman. So when they move into the settlements, Kaunda orders, he's a prime minister, Kaunda orders Lenshina to move the people back, him and the people. He orders Lenshina to move the people back to where they belong, as well as ordering her to surrender. Kaunda orders Lenshina to go back and then to take back the people as well as surrender, and she refused. So July 30th, 1964, soldiers, local and international, soldiers from the British Army, as well as some local police, move into Chinstadi. They move into the area where Lenshina and her people are. So now it's war time. This is the part where the massacre starts. The army go with obviously machine guns. John Anna, the person in charge of Chinstadi, that was his name, his name was John Anna. He, while the troops are there, like they form like a line like they take their positions he gets a megaphone goes up a car or a hill i'm not sure to address the people he tells them to surrender but they do not listen they're hiding in the bushes so he goes down and goes the colonel that was sent by um the for the people in charge from the queen so basically let's just say the colonel that was sent from the queen he goes back to him but he knows that the minute he goes back to him he's going to hand over power so that um the war can begin so that's what he does now at the time he reaches um the colonel the people hide, hide there were people hiding in the bushes lumpa church members hiding in the bushes but he did not know that okay he knew but he did not know there were that many so at the time he goes back they charge at the soldiers and the, those people with um machetes basically manual weapons like home home tools they charge at them with this chant of jericho their plan was to catch them off guard but uh, it didn't work failed attempt at charging at surprising them with an attack a hundred of them die now that's just day one it didn't go on for very long on this just the first hours they move further into the village and they carry out a massacre they break down the store kids of course and they carry out a massacre chickens die animals die now the sad part of this is what is a little war a little massacre a little violence without innocent women and girls being raped you see it is my eyes what is it let's see so it is said that women and girls were raped by police and soldiers before they were stabbed to death the point where the stalkers were broken down then she now hears people crying but remember it's in the settlement and it's just lumpa followers so Lenshina is in hiding, but she hears people crying and she suggests that she hands herself over. But husband Petros says, don't do it. But then after some time, people just die. People keep dying. 700 one day. One day. And according to my research, it wasn't even that it was like a fight. It's just a massacre. Because on the other side of the spectrum, 
fewer than 10 policemen and soldiers actually were killed maybe even injured because they are fight they are trying to murder people that have machetes and they have guns a guns faster you know approximately 700 i've already said this but approximately 700 people are killed that's just an approximate there is no definite number as to how many there's no definite figure as how many people died that day but it's just approximately it was 700. august 11th 1964 national surrenders national husband surrender to the police and they're taken into custody now what kaunda wanted was for Leshina to surrender she's taken to court when she's interrogated Leshina says like like i said in the beginning she never involved herself in the politics of anything so now when she's arrested she says she blames the young men that joined the Lumpa mission because they are the vigorous they are radical they want to fight they are high on being young so she blames them because she thinks they never listened to what she was saying because like i said the men go like if you actually dip it if you actually think about it she was just she was an og feminist kind of because she didn't want she wanted bemba tradition to go back to what it was matrilineal she wanted to protect the women because i'm guessing she didn't even she didn't like what she went through herself because of tradition and being inherited and being cleansed and marrying being married off to someone who is not your husband in the first place in the name of cleansing so i, th I think that was the agenda for her unfortunately for her when she gained more followers there's very few people that listen to her she said they were only with her to gain for their own advantage which is political advantage like to gain power over others and all that stuff Leshina and her husband were never taken to trial by Kaunda. They never even saw a court. They were immediately just arrested, taken to Kalabo, and they served there for three years. The thing is, they were not even under tight security. It was just um, basic security because they deep down they knew she wasn't a threat. She wasn't a threat at all. But it was just like containing a very charismatic leader who who had the ability to sway the masses. So, yeah. After three years, Nation and Petros tried to, ex to escape, but they failed. And after that, they were arrested again and taken to Mokushi in a much in a stricter, stricter holding. In 1970, at this time, Kaunda is president. It's 1970. He's no longer prime minister. In 1970, Kaunda orders the demolition of the of Zion. He orders the demolition of the church in Chinsali, of the Lumpa Church in Chinsali. After five more years in custody, Petros as husband loses his life and Leshina is left alone to the rest of her sentence. Five more years pass under arrest and then Leshina, Leshina's husband Petros dies in 1972. Three years later Leshina is placed under house arrest because now she's alone she obviously can't bounce off any ideas. It's said that she lived very she lived a very quiet life kind of the way she lived when she was in Chinsali like heading the mission. On December 7th, 1978, Leshina dies under house arrest. She's taken to Lumpa Mission, the church. She's taken to Lumpa Church in Chinsali. And on the grounds of the church or near the church, that's where she's buried. In her hometown at her church by her people. After the massacre, a lot of because the Lumpa the Lumpa mission was very popular. Now after the massacre a lot of people were displaced people moved out of zambia zambia lost quite the population they moved to congo they moved to they just they went into hiding because like there were non lumpa followers lumpa church followers Mo, some of uh, many of them were also the crocodile clan part of Nishina's family they moved to different districts in the country because they didn't want to be killed by any followers because it didn't it didn't end at the massacre it did not end at the massacre people who followed Nishina's followers were still being attacked by unique followers so they had to leave after um Nishina died and then some years passes when like people would go back to Chinsali I want to know what the population of Chisali is. I really do. Because that kind of influence, didn't she just wipe the entire district? That kind of influence is a lot. I want to know. But anyway, after she died, left some years past, 
people would go back to Chinsadi, bury her, and continue living their lives. Is the Lumpa mission still alive? Yes. Some people have tried to revive the church, but um, it's not going that good. But it's still kind of operating. That's the story of Lenshina, you guys. Who was wrong? Was Lenshina wrong? Was the Lumpa church the cult? I thought she was quite the feminist, to be honest. Because for her time, 1950s, a woman in power, a Bemba woman in power, a black one trying to, like, I don't know. That was just my thought process anyway. Yeah, who was wrong? she wrong for tossing up the church and going against um, the core societal core values was Kaunda wrong for trying to attack people that were peacefully okay her followers were not peacefully living okay yeah they were peacefully living because Unip attacked first so was Unip wrong for attacking people that were just trying to form their own society and worship and also kind of get, they got freedom from the colonial government at the time what do you guys think i want i really want to know i want to go to chinsali i just want i just feel like there's there are a couple of old people there that can tell a really good story i i feel it so yeah that has been wicked wednesday for today guys i'll see you guys in my next episode probably the other week i'm not sure but yeah i'll see you guys on saturday i'll see you guys on my vlog on saturday i think it will be a throwback because um we have some catching up to do it's going to be a throwback um yeah i'll see you guys in my next video tell me what in the comments like comment and subscribe for some more cool content for some more educational and intriguing content i'll see you guys in my next video and bye